Hi guys to everyone, I'm Ada from Poison Drop and let's give a huge welcome back to Kit St. John, our friend, I mean, hello Kit, I mean again, it's amazing here, how are you? Ada, what's happening? It's so good to see you, it's always been too long. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ever, and it's it's hard to do an interview <laughs> with you because you're... Your beauty distracts everybody. So Thank you. Say, if I get I lost my word, that's the reason why. <laughs> I mean it's been like it's been, it's been, I think, a six, five months that we did the last interview. It was around March. And you were doing something all around. So what's happening in this period? What did you do? How did it go with the writing the rock vault, burning rain? your own project that we're going to talk in a, in a while. So what happened this spring summer period? Well, for those viewers that might be aware, there's a show in Las Vegas, which is now at the Hard Rock. Um, that's called Raiding the Rock Ball that was shut down during COVID. Yeah. And it, it was it just went away and everything went away, as you know. Yeah. And um, back Many years ago when it started, like more than 10 years ago, um, there was uh, the singers in the show were um, uh, Robin McCauley from uh, Macaulay Shanker and Survivor, Andrew Freeman from Last in Line, and a guy named Paul Shortino who was in Rough Cut. And occasionally they would need to sub out shows. They'd need a sub guy to come in. And when my schedule worked out, when I wasn't out doing burning rain or or whatever uh back in the day uh i would come in and i would do a weekend or do a week or whatever and sometimes uh, i was there and i learned the show so when they started back up after covid uh the owner an englishman sir harry cowell i don't know if you've ever heard of him <laughs> he, uh, he gave me a call and uh and asked me if i was interested and after the first time up on stage he came running up all excited and he was like, do you want to do this show? I mean, you need to do this show. And I was like looking at my calendar going, <laughs> I'm in, I'm in brother. I mean, COVID had just ended and I hadn't really had a lot going on. And you too. You know, Eric Singer from Kiss once told me, Keith, just say yes immediately to everything and it'll all work out, even if you're double booked. So now I've been in the show a year and a half and it's had its ups and downs it was uh too busy for a little while it was five nights a week which but is just a, was, a lot that's a lot right Not yet. But considering, um considering there are four singers in the show okay come on, come on. it's not that bad it's just you're tied down to being here in las vegas in the desert you know for that many days um but i did build a studio here immediately i turn the walk-in closet into a vocal booth, which was easy with foam padding yeah. and whatnot. And so I worked from here as well. Uh, but even with that, luckily for me, just as I was going to call my schedule down with them a little bit, yeah. they their schedule went down. It went down to like three days a week. Okay, so it was easy. And right now, it's up and down because the Hard Rock Cafe, when they first hired the band, yeah. They didn't realize there were some conflicts along the way. Yeah, I mean, so, of course, it could happen. So October, November, December are a little bit weak. That's why I started booking more stuff like this UK yeah. tour I've got coming up. That yeah, I talk about. Exciting. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm really excited. You know, once I light myself back up in that way, yeah, I'll be able to stop. You know, because it's really what I want to do. Of course, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the tour is, of course, called the Rain is Burning, but you are touring yeah. with the Jack Frost. Yes. And, uh, I mean, uh, I love, of course, him for his name, of course. But uh, how did you guys get in touch? I mean, how started this collaboration, this duo, this uh, choice of doing this tour with him? All right. Well, let me back up a little bit. Uh, yeah. So I first was kind of entitling this tour coming up in October, which starts on October 3rd, is yeah. it in the UK. And starts in Edinburgh at Bannerman's. And mm -hmm. after that's done, I go down to Austria and I play, we play one day in Velden at a great club called Bluesiana. So anyway, plug, plug. And originally, um, I just, I'm always with fire and water and 
opposites and heaven and hell. I'm always that kind of thing, you know. And I was going to call the tour Europe is Burning. And then I was looking at the original poster and I'm going, well, I don't really have that big of a reason to say that. Let me make it more about me. Yeah. And it's like, I said, I, I feel like I really miss doing this and I'm sad. So I'm kind of like raining inside. And then on the outside, I'm really burning to do this. Okay, I'm going to call this Rain is Burning. Rain is and that's burning. cool because of the band name, you know. Yeah, um, exactly. So, you know, it's kind of a tip of the hat. And there are a lot of Burning Rain fans out there. Yeah. And there's a lot of them in Europe, you know, and uh -huh. Asia and South America. Yeah. It's, it's a big international following. And they're always yeah, bothering me to record Doug even more. When are you guys yeah. going to play? Yeah. So, um, anyway, um, trying to keep a long story short, I do oh. this event until COVID every year around the NAM Festival in Anaheim, California. Okay. That's the huge music convention that has over 100,000 people show up every year. Wow. And I throw a concert called Ronnie Montrose Remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I saw on, the, on your social media, yeah. And usually Doug Aldridge comes in. Yeah, the exactly. Place. Yeah, yes. And, and George Lynch and Frank Hannon and Steve Stevens. We've had Brad Whitford and uh, Brad Gillis and all kinds of, you name it. Tracy Guns, everybody's been there. Because these guitar players on the West Coast. Really? And guys who are hip on the East Coast of the United States. They grew up on those Montrose chops, you know, on that first Montrose record. Even Eddie Van Halen wanted their first album to sound like the Montrose record. So he got Ted Templeman, the guy who produced that first Montrose record. So these events have been kind of pretty well publicized and a lot of rockers come to them because they love the West Coast people love their Montrose. So yeah. one one uh, year. I think it was like the second year, Jack Frost shows up, a guy I don't know. And Jack is just a personable, energetic, lovely man. He uh, He's from back east. He's from New Jersey. And I grew up in New York. Yeah. And I'm a mellow guy compared to a lot of New Yorkers. Yeah. But he shows up. And the way he talks and the way he, he you know, he's gets things yeah. done, like, puts me back into gear and reminds me of my, my, uh, my growing up and my youth. So he shows up and he has like an old 1974 Montrose concert t-shirt in his hand. Oh, he says, hey, Keith, man, you don't know me. I'm Jack Frost, this and that. I'm a real big fan, a real big fan of you're in Doug's band, Burning Rain. And, and I love Montrose. That's like my favorite of all time, man. And um, he goes, if you ever need any, any help, man, I'm a friend, dude. I'll help you out in any way. And he takes the shirt and he goes, I want you to have this shirt. I've had this shirt. It's been sitting in my dresser for, you know, since like whenever I found it in the 80s, man. And I go, are you sure, dude? I mean, I mean, I love this shirt and I love to have it. And it's an amazing gift. Yeah. And it it's makes awesome. me feel like something's like destined to happen between us at some point. Yeah. And something a couple of years later, I got him in the show. So he, you know, he played played the songs in the show and we've stayed friends and sometimes when I've been out on the east coast of New York we get together yeah Imagine. and um I was putting this show together and just to save on expenses I originally had a guitar player from the UK okay yeah. I had a guy from Ireland that I know who was going to learn the stuff and come over and, and do the stuff but it was in the beginning phases we weren't totally committed yet okay and Jack yeah. heard that we were doing it and called me up and he said, brother, I, you know, whatever you need, I got to do this I with you, man. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, and the energy just took me over. And I said, and okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to do this. And just, I'm going in blind with Jack, but at the same time. The first time that you are some doing some live all around with him. Like this with him, just me and him. Yeah. But at the same time. You know, I know through the grapevine how serious he is and how yeah. many, you know, he's been in Sabotage. He was, okay. he's been touring with Aldo Nova all summer with my good buddy, Michael T. Ross on keyboards from Raiding the Rock Vault. Yeah. And, you know, his, his band was Seven Witches and he was in Lizzie Borden. I mean, he's, he's a pro guy. Yeah. And he's really, really got it together. 
So I know he can handle this that. stuff. <laughs> Probably more so than the guy in the UK because you've got to handle Doug Aldridge's stuff. And Doug is... It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing player. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Untouchable. You got to handle George Lynch's stuff. He's untouchable. Yeah. You got to handle Ronnie Montrose's stuff. Even more. Which, <laughs> nobody sounds like Ronnie, you know? And, and Danny Stagg from Kingdom Come, who's just a blues... He's like Jimmy Page reincarnated. You know, he's got that old school blues thing, but he's really, really got it down, you know? So... It's not easy, but I know Jack's going to get it all together, or he has it all together, because we've been doing this as well, and figuring parts out, and it's yeah, it's sounding killer. It's amazing. Plus, he not, sings, too. He's, so he's going to do some back vocals? Exactly. Well, you kind of have to. A lot of this stuff, the Burning Rain and the Lynch Mob, not so much the Montrose, the Kingdom Come, I mean, this stuff is like sort of 80s rock sounding, and there are a lot of vocals in the hooks. Yeah, 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 and uh, I mean, because he sings well and he sings high and can. It's an acoustic. All. It's an acoustic tour. It's an acoustic tour, yeah. but uh, just like the tour we did when Doug and I did the uh, the stripped and naked tour, which uh, here I found an old T-shirt from the stripped and naked tour. You can see it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is the, these are the cities we did. Okay. And if you can see on there, we're, we we're also, I mean, we, we did five cities in the UK. Yeah, exactly. Um, Eva, yeah. We were also playing at Bannerman's in, um, in Edinburgh. Yeah. And we're also yeah. playing in, in Austria at, uh, yeah. at Velden at Louisiana. Uh, yeah. So just a couple of the same haunts we'll be visiting. And um, if I hadn't done this with Doug, you know, I really wouldn't have the idea how does it look like songs in that format. But you say acoustic, and what I wanted to say was we got to throw a little heat on it. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, so I've got my acoustic guitar, but when I need a little stomp box and I need some heat, you know, I can get it. Yes. And Jack as well. I mean, you can't really burn some of those leaves without having the proper, you know, saturation and heat. Yeah. You know? Jack asked me the other day if he should just bring an electric. I'm like, no, no, no. You, <laughs> we, we heat it up in a certain way. Um, I got this pedal. Uh, it's, I know some people that do tribute concerts out in Los Angeles. And um, I know some guys that do the Zeppelin tributes. And I tried all the guitar pedals that I have. And this one that was recommended to me, um, it's, it's just called Xana. I... I plug the acoustic in and it's it's for guys trying to emulate the old Jimmy Page sound. So it's not very, it's not super heavy. crunchy. Yeah. It's not super like heavy duty. It just oh, adds yeah. a little bit of nice tube, like preamp heat to the sound. Warm so for me, warm that's warm good enough. Exactly. That's it. So it's a good the but acoustic with balls, you know, down here. Yeah. And I feel we can say, and the hard acoustic are the, Hard the navy acoustics too. Yes. Kind of. Not so completely heavy because heavy people think always to heavy metal. That's all this association with. But let's say some hard and heavy meaning uh, with uh, more addition to it. But uh, yeah. I mean, you already, I think, as well, choose the, um, um, the, the, the music, the songs that you're going to have to play to perform. Mostly. 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 Okay. okay. What I told Jack is. Here's 25 songs. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, and some, uh, and some covers that you okay. don't have to learn all the covers, but maybe even just snippets so we can bring up a few things, let the audience sing along with us on some stuff and have some real fun. Yeah. And I kind of like, I have the mentality when we get there, if people are responding to that stuff, let's do more of that stuff. You know, yeah. kind of a thing. Especially, you know, because and, you, when there's something like, let's say, it's something small as well, chill and people that are even song that people sometimes they do they doesn't know they don't know the song. If you put some cover here and there, people follow you more, and then they sing along with you, and then they listen more as well the song they don't they doesn't know. But of course, this is more for the new bands. 
But for you, of course, yeah. that doesn't matter because they know already the song of Burning Rain and uh, Kingdom Come and all the rest, of course. <laughs> yes, yes. But um, in an environment like this, when you kind of are, as we said before, you kind of stripped and naked, and it's just us and them right there. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to get engaged with everybody. Yeah. You know, I want to get to know them. Yeah. They can get to know us. If yeah. we start off, I played in a version of Nazareth for a little while. And if we, we start hair of the dog off, and I see everyone kind of going, ah, once we get to the first chorus, we're just, <laughs> I'm just going to look at Jack and we're just going to stop and move to the next. So, I want to have extra material so we can yeah. we have wiggle like that. That's, no, I don't want to for so anybody. There is basically kind of as well of a, of a improvisation as well. I mean, you have a kind of let's say you have those songs, that song that you choose, this song that you choose, but as well you don't have like this is the first, this is the second. You you can switch it off as long as I mean as you want. So this is not working properly. I don't like the vibes. Let's switch to the other one. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, where I grew up in New York, it's it's show tunes and it's Broadway and it's, you know, opera and it's all these different kinds of music. And it's all these little amazing underground jazz clubs with coffee houses, with all these jammers. You know, these are the places where Dylan and Hendrix and everybody else hung out and just showed up and jam. And so that's kind of the way I grew up and kind of that's the way Ronnie Montrose grew up. So when, when we were doing our thing. I mean, we, we'd look out at the crowd and I'd go, hey, Ronnie, let's just start this show with Space Station number five. I mean, that's what these guys need. And, and we would do it, you know, and then from there he'd go, OK, Keith, just call him out, man. And then, you know, sometimes he'd come up behind me while we're in a song and go, hey, you know, let's do Bad Motor Scooter last is the encore. Man. I'd be like, OK. And, you know, I'm, on, I'm an on the fly guy and not all people get that. You know, I've had situations where some people get a little mm. irked or maybe not pissed off, but like, you know, a not little yet. bit not used to changing the set list around. You know? Yeah, but you are like, like, more. let's just improvise, just not be like yeah. sticking to that order, be feeling and doing, I mean, doing what you're feeling at the moment, singing as For well. Sure. And because mainly what they're feeling. What they are that's feeling. That's what I was saying, because as well, like you have a kind of, yeah. of connection with the audience, with the fact with the people there. Uh, you of course can catch their energies. So you can feel their vibes. They can feel yours. And so you you find a balance between you and them. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a two way conversation. Yeah, it's exactly. Not like if you're talking to somebody, if you're just talking and not listening to anything they say, you know, what kind of conversation is that? You know, no, so. I, can't. I mean, it's just like doing. Yeah, you can just stay home and playing, uh, you know, singing for yourself. It's the, doing a live stream, for example, if no one is there listening. I mean, and that's why you go to, especially when it's acoustic, because it's different. It's not like you're on a huge stage, you know, just like playing uh, with the thousands of hundreds of people with the electrified um, instrument. It's just uh, something more intimate. Exactly. And that's. Exactly. Uh, Something that as well, uh, when from us from Europe, we hear, you know, like a band is doing a tour, a musician is doing a tour in Europe, usually it's more like huge places, all um, electric electric guitar, but acoustic. It's something that, of course, I think it's already done, but it's a, as well kind of new as particular. It uh, yeah. really shows that you want to let um, you know from us. So like uh, like in the US, no me, it's time as well for Europe because you did already with the dog. So let's do it again. So I mean, so for example, from someone that never saw a kind of this type of acoustic show with you or dog or now with you and Jack, what can we expect? Well, first of all, all the bands that we've been talking about. Yeah. You know, um, definitely, we're definitely, no matter what, hitting a lot of burning rain, the Montrose, Lynch Mob, Kingdom Come. And then, you know, there's some maybes, you know, there's some maybe, maybe some Nazareth. I played with Tracy Gunn for over a year in a version of like Tracy's LA Guns. I mean, we could whip out some of that stuff. Um, and even with those bands, if you only did three songs from each of those bands, you already have a night. Because uh, that would already be like 18 songs or something. But 
I know there's going to be some snippets of covers or maybe some full covers thrown in there. If somebody yells out Led Zeppelin or they yell out Whitesnake or they They're yell out Geo or whoever, you know, we're going to come up with something or Sabbath and we're going to do it, you know, because you, you have that right. You're, you're you voice that thing. Yeah. You want to be challenged. Uh, and uh, oh, what's interesting about Mr. Frost and I is we actually wrote two songs together and yeah. both of them have videos out uh, for, hey. for a record called Brothers in Arms on Deco Entertainment, D-E-K-O. And there's a song called Bitch is Crazy. Okay. Look that up. Let's go Bitch is Crazy, Keith St. John in the search bar and you'll find it. Okay. Um, it's me with a with a Dynaglide motorcycle and all this I stuff. I saw it. I saw it. I saw, I saw it. You did? Okay. All I right. remember as well that photo, there was a kind of photo shooting as well, I think. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was also sort of a, a KSJ sort of mostly cell phone production, but it looks pretty good, I think. And we did another one called Make You Mo To Make You Mine. Okay. Uh, to Make You Mine. Um, that I got some great cameos in it because I shot part of it at the Rainbow and I ran into um, different friends there. Andrew Freeman was in it, so he's in the video. And uh, and Phil Susan and Britt Lightning, who was happened to be there hanging yeah, out. Yeah, uh, from Pixon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh and it just so happened my buddies um Mick Mahan, bass player from Pat Benatar, who also yeah. played with Indian Montrose for a couple of years, played bass on that track. Okay. And um and my other good buddy Dave Amato, guitar player from REO, he played guitar and played the lead on that track. So we had a lot of fun. I think Jack's a great songwriter. He puts he put some great stuff together that was easy for me to write to. As well, like you mentioned, being a, um, coming as well from uh, a part of from a story of sabotage says a lot. That's yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, I mean, that song sort of bitches crazy. It came off with this very raw, like you feel like you're in the room yeah. with the band. It's got a natural room sound to it. The guitar has just got that Van Halen one thing to it. The and art girl, he's supposed to be back, back. I said, I said, if you leave the guitars sounding like that, I'm in because that is the raw, rough and ready sound that started the whole shebang off. I mean, Van Halen was the was the blueprint for the rest of what happened in L.A. back in those days, and it helped me you know to understand more and more and more about music as well. It seems, oh, absolutely, yeah, but I was. And, yeah, you know, it feeds the soul. It just yeah, and once you stop it, that's what floats your boat, man. You just can't stop. Yeah, that's why I never then I never saw my base because I, I always knew that someday I I want you know to take it back. I don't know because as well I'm 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 knowing a lot of musicians that sometimes you can say oh, oh look, maybe we could play something together, maybe we can do something together. So you never know. It's there. Who knows. Well, if you come out to the UK tour, um, come on out to Britain or come on out to uh, to Edinburgh and bring your bass. Edinburgh gets beautiful, David. Bring You're your so bass. lucky to be there. Edinburgh is one of my dream city always, Scotland. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's one of mine, too. I absolutely yeah. love it. And, of um, course, LA, too. So it's kind of the opposite. Very opposite. Very, yes. very opposite places. Yeah. Or San Francisco, yeah. anyway, all the all the West Coast, because I, I like you know that the road that you can see all, all the changes from the landscape, from the, sure. the dry area up until Oregon. It's a, I heard that it's a beautiful highway to drive, and it's oh yes, yeah. yes. If you go to the very north of California, yeah, which I accidentally drove through. Um, I don't know. Why, I, I, I had a rental car and I was going to drop it up at the airport in like Portland or something on a gig. And I decided, nah, I'm just going to drive down the coast and see what that looks like. And I was in HR puff and stuff. I'm dating myself. Like that's a really old kids show. Mm -hmm. And it was just with the giant trees that are, you know, 150, 200 feet high. These trees are like, some of them are 1500 years old. Yeah. And they're so huge and it's so countrified. It's just so rural up there. Yeah. You know, uh, there, there's you know, the gas station that still has the little hose that goes ding, ding. Mm -hmm. And 
the old fashioned thing with the numbers that like flip as the gas is pumping in, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's, it's really beautiful, man. If you could just disconnect from modern mm-hmm. technology for a minute and go yeah. up there and just be with that, it's really, um, it's therapeutic. It's a great experience. Yeah, it's, it, it's a therapeutic dr- uh, drive, let's say. Just like it's going to be therapeutic for me to drive from Edinburgh to Kingston on Hall in this UK tour coming up in October. Yeah. Basically, you're going to do that by like it's a a bus. You will you will rent bus and doing something like by. Just I rented a car. Yeah, I just yeah. rented a car. And so it's we... just like a really intimate as well. That it's, I mean, it's like just to flying there, enjoying the landscape, and see the beautiful highlands of Scotland and the lowlands of uh, UK. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I see the inside of planes a couple of times a week, every week. And, you know, it's boring. You know, I'd rather wake up a little bit earlier and get to the next city. And um, yeah, I mean, you're always all over the world, moving all the time. And don't forget that you once you said you're like a pinball. So you go everywhere. So maybe stopping a little bit and driving and enjoying, you know, like the, the usual driving at the sunset or at the dawn or whatever. It's a, as well, it's a healing process, a healing way of doing that. It's a, and connect you more with, a, with yourself. It doesn't matter where you are. It could be Europe, could it could be Asia, it could be even the US. It's a really helpful. But uh, the magic that has UK, you know, like history, histor- historical part, yeah. landscaping part, musical as well. Music wise, uh, it's huge, of course. And uh, but you're gonna play in the, the I mean, it's like a small venue or it's like theater. Um, what kind of are the general allocation or venue where you're playing? They're, they're all different, okay. mostly you know, smaller to mid venue, mm-hmm. just with like you know, a normal stage that, yeah, things that. You know, full bands play on them and also touring. Maybe national guys are doing more of what we're doing. Same type of thing. Um, doing like an acoustic duo tour or something like that. Um, there is There are one or two that are a little bit more theater and a little bigger. Uh, they're, but they're mostly on the more intimate side. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what I think that's what I'm wanting to have, you know. I want to be yeah. able to talk to as we're playing and that is what i mean and, and so does there is something that you're up per, you, that you're really looking for in this tour to do or to see or to experience mainly well we experienced it last time you know doug and i when we were over there and it just it's it's a different feeling number one when you go over when you come to europe especially from the west coast of the u.s yeah um west coast of the u.s is very the spiritual energy is very spread out and kind of, you know, and just sort of yeah. drifting here and there. But there's so much human history in the yeah. UK that the yeah. essence of the old spirituality and the old souls and all that, that's still in the land and still and just cloth there. And you empathetically, you can, you can just feel it. And yeah, exactly. you know, there's, there's magic in it and it's inspiring um in a way more than you know the west coast of the u.s the east coast of the u.s was settled a lot earlier yeah so you know i feel when i'm in new york where i grew up or or boston or any of those cities i feel elevated a little bit i feel mm. there's something extra there that i can't put my finger on yeah that's... and the same thing when i come over to the uk so. yeah yeah and but, but you have as well one gig in Austria. How does it? I mean, from UK Austria, it's like a I, when I set that up, I was talking to I basically told the agent that was doing the UK that I was already in touch with uh, the owner of Louisiana in okay. Austria, and that she would really really love to have us there, and. Uh, I asked him if he could possibly find some connector shows to get us over there. And it didn't work out. So I talked to Jack. I said, you know, I don't know if we're really going to make any cash. 
doing this gig far away because we're gonna have to fly over and yeah this and that exactly. and the other thing and he's like dude keith i'm there for you you know i'm your buddy i've got your back all the time whatever you want to do just you know just give me a cup of coffee and i'm happy with that and uh you know any bed to sleep on and i'm fine and we're there let's do it so i was just like super happy with a big smile and uh yeah, and, then, and we booked it because it's a completely different as well uh, landscape and reality oh, it's different it's a more like mountain uh, and yes yeah it's a that part of australia mm -hmm. is very very country i mean you're out there yeah but it's not too far from it's like uh, uh, i mean from the north of italy of course because from sicily it's uh, far but from the north of italy it's like a couple of hours so it's uh, like in the center in the core of europe basically and yes. uh, it's a, it, and it's i mean it's beautiful places eat a lot of dessert and make their they are amazing the, the food Absolutely. and the dessert in austria it's amazing the landscape the mountain it's everything beautiful there i mean uh when I see you know that picture, and I lived in in the border with Austria and Italy, I see. I, I see. when I woke up in the morning, I see those huge, huge mountains. You know, because it's all packed. It's not like spread. Like for example, here in Sicily, they are packed, so you don't see horizon. You don't have any horizon there. You have only mountains and uh, hills and these waterfall lakes, uh, all in one small places because it's one more country, but it's beautiful. And I mean, it's different as well. The culture is different from UK. So it's more, a little bit more rural maybe, but of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. And uh, is, you said in which city you're going to play in Austria? Uh, it's called Velden. Velden. It's an, uh, Velden, so, uh, okay. It's near Klagenfurt airport. Okay. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, I, I, I mean, but I, last time I was there, in, I hung out playing with the swans on a lake. I mean, it was... Yeah, it's peaceful. It was, can you imagine why Swan Lake was written? <laughs> um, it is really beautiful. And if you need to like regroup... Recharge. Your soul and your spirit and stuff. Exactly, well said, well said. That is a great place to do it. On the flip side, um, many of my friends from, from the States love to play that place for the same reason. Yeah. There's something magic and positive about the energy there and the club and the people that come to it. Yeah, so, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Michael T. Ross, um, who, like I said, was on tour with Jack and Aldo Nova. He's a keyboard player. Yeah. Uh, he was in Missing Persons and Lita Ford. He likes to go there and play these these little pickup gigs. Yeah. Marco Mendoza loves Mendoza, losing yeah. on um, All kinds. Joel Hoekstra, he told me he loves that place. So and I and I know why. So yeah, so that's a lot of fun there. That's and a special as well, gig. Yeah. Last day of the tour, it's the last one. So I'm expecting yeah. that we're gonna be really hot and really, I mean, hot like as far as like warmed up and. Or, so it's gonna last really like a couple of weeks. It's true. It's gonna yeah. last a couple of weeks, and then uh, did you have other plans coming back? Then let's say home. I don't know where you actually base it because you're spread it a little bit everywhere. And um, I mean, um, because I was asking you before, um, how is going the project that you made? We we talked and mentioned in the last interview with you, Dot Kearns, Las Alias. Well, the project I'm doing, my, my own thing, the Keith St. Yeah. John record that's coming up. Um, coming up as well. Okay. Yeah, it's not necessarily with Todd. Um, Todd's just a good friend and he stopped over to play some bass Yeah, on a song the day that um, the day or the day after we were talking he just yeah. happened to be here <laughs> and it was just kind of fun and um, the I'd like to say some of the tracks on it are kind of almost uh, the more um, sort of how should you say it the more artsy Led Zeppelin songs okay, meets okay. like the Appetite for Destruction album. Okay, yeah. It's a weird blend, and I don't know how why it came out of me, but just a bunch of songs came out that have this punky street energy, but then they have this Blue. over the hills and far away moments in them too, and Is you know, that... in my time of dying and the rain song and all those kind of 
um, deeper bluesy pagey yeah. chords. But you know, and in the in the beginning, Zeppelin had a lot of punky street energy too. Mm -hmm. You know, with communication breakdown and some of those songs. But this um, this has definitely got some songs on it that I I'll be proud of, and mm -hmm. and that I love. But I I didn't expect. I don't feel that influenced or I didn't before by GNR, but this yeah. record, I was like, wow, you know, and I said, Todd is the perfect guy because he's got so much of a background, um, channel slash, to come over and let me see what mm -hmm. he does on this stuff. He ties this together, the drums I've got going with these guitars and it was really successful. I liked it. And um, yeah. anyway, I, I can't really announce a date for that record. Yeah, yet, of course, so. but it's done already it's a uh... longer written um okay the, the record is not done because all the instruments have not been properly re-recorded yet. yeah but let's say that that the the structure at least the song are there is it's kind of basically needs just some last touch here and there a little bit of sure. mastering so we're gonna have the kiss and john right now finally so we can talk oh, deep about because 2024 coming up. Hopefully that's a magic number. Yeah, but it's yeah. gonna be, I think, a lot about you. It's you that album. So yeah, that's that's. I mean, uh, at least one second, just a, a, a moment, an album, and some project, which is your yourself, your expression, and I think something sure. that we have to brought up sooner or later. And um, apart from that, I was going as well with uh, Burning Rain. Uh, it's um, they are still a little bit like put it a little aside for the moment. Something working on. Yeah, I mean, all of us, myself, Los Elias, Brad Lang, um, especially me. You know, Doug and I have had this band since '98 or '99. Mm -hmm. um, I would really love to be able to push forward and do it. Do another new record. And at least do some tours. And like I was saying earlier, if we can't do that, maybe we can make some videos together. Yeah. And at least uh, rebirth some of the old great songs because yeah. there's a lot of fans for that music out there. And there's a lot of sort of hidden gems on some of those records yeah. that people bring up all the time. So, you know, it'd be nice in today's world, which is much more of a visual world, yeah, to actually exactly. get some visuals out there. Yeah, it's that actually if you're a part, yeah. yeah. If you're like, you know, there is a distance, uh, you're in a city, here's another, you're doing a project, it's doing another, it's easier as well for both of you doing that. Because that's something, this beautiful thing as well, this friendship between, between you and Doug, that is beautiful. It's a, Absolutely. Yeah, it's like a duo, it's beautiful. That's uh, something that I always, every time I saw something like of you playing, there is him, this Doug, and the guitar, and... You have a beautiful connection, chemistry, I think, as you, as a friendship. So that's, Absolutely. yeah, that's, a, I would love to see both of you some days playing. It would be amazing. And uh, regarding all the other projects, I mean, what's going on in Kiss and, Kiss and World, uh, Kiss and John World? I mean, there's something that you are, except the tour you're still doing, showing up, I mean, uh, in the next future, or it's just like you're focusing on the tour and uh, at the moment? And you're well, there are a couple other songs and albums okay. I'm working on and threatening to sing on. Um, okay. But there is a guitar player I really like from France and uh, from Paris, and he's um, he's he's really great. I like his song ideas. Yeah. What I'm trying to avoid is continually distracting myself from writing my own material and getting yeah. out. Because yeah. that's where I live. I yeah. live in there, and that's where I. I shine the most. So yeah. um, I enjoy doing some of these, you know, live shows, well, especially yeah. coming out and doing the Rain is Burning tour in the UK, which is coming up because I get to do my stuff, you know, yeah. that I wrote with Doug, which is which is really cool. Um, in, of course, a fresh and compelling way. On a nice. um, but, uh, you know, it's always it's always candy on a string when someone sends me something and being a fire sign, I love challenges. So it's yeah. like, let me put this up and take something to it. And by and large, when I do that and send it back, people generally love it. And they say, hey, man, can you do it's some good. more? Yeah. And there's money on the table. So that always helps. Right. Too. And um, I need to figure out how to either stop that or work my thing in while I'm doing that. 
I mean, um, I think you can do both, but I think as well that, you know, your own project, especially your fan, they are waiting for that. Yeah. The we one guy in Paris, um, we've got seven or eight songs together for... Okay. What I'd rather have it be is is his record and, you know, I'm a guest, kind okay. of. I, I kind of want it to appear that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just going to stay my my number one, and um, and then and then my own solo thing can be more of a big deal to me. Yeah, than working solo. more on that, focusing on that, kind of thing. and having a tour with your own project. That's going to yeah. be even bigger. That's going to be bigger because, of course, I mean, there is a, a, a in the lineup of, of your own project. There is a fixed lineup, or it's mainly like you and people may sometimes friends that join you in the writing yeah, music. So it's not like a Kids and John, let's say, band. It's just like Kids and John and the, the live musician, people who, who contribute to the album. Yeah, that's, that's why we should listen to that more. I mean, it's and, and we it with the Thunderbird. And <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll do some jamming. Yeah, I mean, I need some. So uh, just let's summarize it. If the tour is going to start at Edinburgh. Yes, tour starts in Edinburgh okay. on uh, October 3rd at Bannerman's in Edinburgh. So okay. be there. Do not miss that. Okay. And then we go down, I believe the next city is Kingston on Hull. We play okay. at a place called um, O'Reilly's. We play at Night Train um, in Bradford. We play at B2 in mm -hmm. Norwich. We play the Black Heart in London. Uh, we play in London. Yes, Black Heart. We play a place called um, The Station in Cannock. And we play uh, a Corporation in Sheffield. Sheffield, it's, uh, it's... Usually what I can remember off the top of my head. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, people can get this information apart from this interview that I will put the, the, the all the single gigs uh, in your, of course, personal uh, website, social media. Of course, I can get that all those information. Yeah, go and, to tootiesaintjohn.com and the links will just take you to the venue outlets where you can buy okay. the ticket. All right, uh, it's even easier. And it's not too heavy on the pocket. It's pretty reasonable. <laughs> and I'll be bringing all kinds of stuff. Like um, there's new T-shirts coming. Uh, what do I got back here? Well. I don't have anything that's representative of what's coming, but I have the, um, it's called, if you go on my website, keithstjohn.com, the shirt is called Love Kills, is the name oh, of the t-shirt. And it's it's typical Keith St. John style. It's cross-ish with like a, with like a, a roughly banner with, with the name. And then it's got some things happening, a heart that's on fire and dragons and this Always and fire, they're always fire. <laughs> Always fires somewhere, right? I don't, I don't know how that always comes up. Um, so the Love Kills shirt I'll have with me. I've got these, which I'll give away some of these, and they'll also be for sale, like dirt cheap. I don't want to make any money on these, but this is a little thumb drive. Oh, this is and cool. it's called Fire and Rain songs, right? And and they come in different colors. This one happens to be chartreuse green, but there's some prettier colors. Um, and okay. so it's a thumb drive, mm -hmm. and this is going to have uh, four or five videos on it. Okay. And I may I may also include the ones that um, that I talked about that I did with Jack since he's yeah. on the tour, and it'll kind of have a lot of my favorite playlists from all the Burning Rain records. So it's so, kind of as well a way to know you better. Yeah, yeah. You'll have a bunch of Burning Rain songs, and you'll have some videos, and Maybe some interview clips and stuff like that, you know. It's like a little, like it's a kind of a booklet uh, of all your yes. works and uh, in in the last yeah. period, please. That's a that's an idea. I never think it's you know like a thumb drive. You know, it's a good, it's a cool idea. Well, you should... yeah. I mean, I, I found a company who can you know do that printing on it, and yeah, you know, people, people remember what it is when it's sitting in there. In their yeah, purse yeah. Or, you know, on their desk at home or whatever. Yeah. Or pocket when they get home, like, oh, right, that's what this is. It's Keith St. John's thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and it's a lot easier than any other thing. You know, you just yeah. plug it into anything. 
Yeah, because sometimes even some cars, new cars have this, you know, entrance of this thumb drive, so you can put it there and listen to the music straight away. Oh, look, you have Kiss and John, and let, let's put it in the car, and you listen to the music, because I don't know why car is the most, pla- is the place where people listen more music, at least for myself. Well, because you're driving. Day, yeah. When you're not driving, you've got, you're able to hold your smart device. So yeah. everything's visual, right? Yeah. When you're driving, you can listen. Exactly. So, Kit, I see something behind your back, apart to the bass, I guess. The curtain? Oh, oh, the no, guitar. No. Yeah, yeah, the guitar. So, what yeah. are you were practicing? Oh, okay. You were practicing? There, there uh, well, I don't, that- I don't know what kind of tune this is in, because I haven't, I just got here, and I haven't played this since the last time I was here, but it is here, and I think it's safe to say that something will come out of it. Yeah, sure. Um, so can you give some hint of what you will be hearing in October? Oh, let me think really fast here. Okay, so we're definitely going to hear some burning rain. Absolutely. Um, so how about um, little snippets, right? Yeah. Snippets. Someday I'll see you in heaven. Heaven gets me by. Okay, so, that's what you get on that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Um, yeah, Heaven Gets Me By is something I always love to play. There will be a lot of Burning Rain songs that um, we haven't played much live or we haven't played at all live just uh-huh. because I'd like to get out there with some fresh things that um, weren't that's played. Fun. For example, last time. Doug and I came over in 2019. We played all Burning Rain songs, and um, we were focusing on the uh, latest album release, yeah. Face the Music. So I have one or two on that record that we didn't play that I'll play, and um, and a few others. Yeah, we'll be, oh, that's we'll cool. Doing it. So, which other? I mean, for all of your you know re- repertoire songs, we could listen. I mean, that will be played. Were there some from Montrose, or I don't know. Can Some from Montrose for sure. I mean, you have to do. Uh... You know, cause you rock candy, baby. Your heart sweet and sticky. All right. So, I still yeah. have to work the acoustic versions up. It, it's been a minute, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm glad we found this here and we can play a little bit for you. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's interesting because, like, a, like I mean, no one I think played something live in our Poison Rock history interview, or at least in my history. So no kidding. So I want so to. They the- say I'm um, out. Of, I'm busting your cherry. Yeah. <laughs> the reason. <laughs> I mean, but I think there is as well some song of Kingdom Come that maybe fun can hear it. Um, yeah, there's definitely going to be some Kingdom Come. Yeah. There's, uh, let's see, there's um, the obvious one. I'm sure we're going to play that. <laughs> We've come a long, long way to be with you. And then it's... Um, Get it on Now that you come and set me free All that I want Something like that. That's a mess. You know that's one of that's my favorite song of Kingdom Come, of course, so I need to hear it live. I mean, now, Jack, I know. as a disclaimer to me, um, Jack Frost is my amazing, brilliant guitar player who's coming with me on this, and he will be really an ace on all these parts. He's such a good guitar player. He's brilliant, and he has to play Doug Aldridge parts and Ronnie Montrose parts That's and Danny awesome. Stagg parts and George Lynch parts because we'll be doing some Lynch mob and. Um, 
you know, so I'm, I'm just doing, I'm noodling for you guys right now, which I will also do at the shows. Um, we're going to do a little rehearsal the day after tomorrow for two days and see who's going to play what cool. part. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it'll be. When you were going to leaving for UK, I mean, from, I mean, actually, where is the last day that you'll be in? Um, you, well, you I'm in to... Vegas, but we're, okay. we're going to leave out of JFK on the 1st. Okay. And, um. So you know, we, fast forward. Really? We lose time. You know, we lose time going that way. So we'll arrive on the second, stay okay. overnight, and play on the third. You know, so that's a really straightforward on the on the stage. And, yeah. Um, and of course, exactly. there will be people you know like demanding as well. Of course, other song of your career as well. But I think as well, someone of them will demanding some I don't know some covers. You will be performing some covers. You are that's on your plan. So what can people could expect? Um, yeah, some covers. Well, we both, I mean, we're, we've both been around for a little while. So we know a lot of covers. I mean, a lot of things people call out, we can probably do. I know that from my past playing with Doug, I mean, always over in Britain, White Snake and Zeppelin and the English bands, maybe even sort of a remake of a of a stone song done in my own way and some things like this uh will be fun uh there's tons of stuff there's sabbath ozzy dio i mean just whatever people are yelling out you know this is like a party you know also what makes sense for a sing-along you know it's, mm -hmm. it's really fun when the audience and you know they like singing in my experience yeah, so, but of course, I mean, they come into your gig, they know your song, they will sing along with you with all your songs as well. But of course, it will be you know, like a party at the end. A little bit chilling, an acoustic version, but when you, when the fan and the people knows the lyrics, it, it, it's, it's as well chilling times, but they, you know, a little bit become more a party. So it changes a little bit the perspective. Yeah, so, yeah. So... Basically, it's going to be, um, you, you said that you're going to leave on the third and you're going to, the, the last day is going to be uh, after two couple of weeks. Uh, yes. People yeah. outside the door, the answer is yes in about 30 minutes. <laughs> sorry. Um, go ahead. Uh, sorry about that, Adam. Yeah, I so said that um, you're going to leave, like I said, the tour is going to last a couple of weeks. So the first day is going to be the third and the yes. last day is going to be in Austria. Yes, last day is in Austria. Um, and it's only 10 days, 10 days later. So, okay. um, But then yeah. it's like, like this, you jump from Austria. So basically it's going to be all English land and then yes. one. Yes, one then one in the, in the beautiful... Um, yeah. mountains, lakes, and countryside of Austria, because it's in Velden, which is in a very rural, rural area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And, yeah, it's beautiful. And people, well, at least, I mean, what can I say? What can, what they could expect from, you know, this live in, uh, especially in England, because it's mainly focused there. Because we both, we, everyone knows in the world that England and uh, you all UK, because of course you are as well in Edinburgh, all UK, uh, it's uh, like the holy ground of music absolutely absolutely i mean that is pretty much going over to britain is where i feel you know for americans anyway was sort of the birth cradle of rock and roll i mean yeah, all exactly. the, all the godfathers of rock and roll who started it yeah were british for us you know we called it the british invasion you know that's yeah that's yeah. what it was in america and um so it's very special to go over there. And um, as far as what to expect, um, if people went, anybody who went to the um, Stripped and Naked tour I did with Doug Aldridge in 2019 um, would have seen us with two acoustic guitars. And we have some heat pedals. So, you know, if you need to play some lead guitar, you can, we can still really, really rock out. <laughs> and um, maybe a couple of percussion instruments and things like this. But, um, Basically, there's no song off limits uh, that we can't cover in this format. And what's nice about it is people are, are right here. They're yeah. not 70 feet away like down the there in the barricade. Time. You know, they're right yeah. here. But we can talk. You know, someone wants to make conversation after one song, we can yeah. do it. 
There is like it's, a, it's like really a cool, really special. change of 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 energies and the vibes during the evening. That one as well make closer the fans and the people on the stage. That's really beautiful that the things you did. But I guess you're thinking as well about the performing, uh, like about your because like we mentioned as well uh, about your own personal project, about your album that you have that you re you will release. You are thinking as well to make. In the future, a tour with you, like Kids and John tour. Well, absolutely. I've been working on it, and uh, I, I, um, I have this album coming out with a guy named Ron Coolen that I co-wrote all the songs with him. But it's technically, you know, it's his album, and it's coming out in December. But it's all co-wrote, and it's great. Um, and I really like the songs. But I, I need to slow down these other projects so I can finish my record. Yeah, and, uh, and see you live with you. Maybe this fall. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. This for and maybe I don't know who the 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 springs and the next autumn huge tour, like covering all the words. I mean, it's your time, Kip. You deserve it just to just be you and tour with Kiss and John. <laughs> but but anyway, I think in any of your performances, it's always you. I mean, just we can perceive, uh, we can feel your ener your energy, your sound, your voice. But I, I mean, appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. I'm gushing. <laughs> yeah, so if you really we want to make like uh, the the just uh, taking the big spot, so we have a tour coming up. I mean, which is basically close. I mean, the next week almost. Uh, the next week. Yeah, next week it's on. It's the next when Wednesday, I guess. Right? Isn't is it? it? Is that the third? Yeah, the third. Yeah. One it's week okay. almost. Yeah, the next week it's already the tour, and uh, it's gonna be. I mean, it's full. The, did you have uh, some days off at least? Some <laughs> days to rest. Well, you know what that means. It's time to face the music. Yeah, and talk to <laughs> the light. But you always have been full immersed in music. You live inside the music. It's your life. So, and I mean, but I, just uh, have some minutes, some moment to chill during this tour as well. Well, I don't think there's going to be much chill time. I did though, um, last time we took trains and planes a lot, uh, I did rent a car for the UK because I just, I kind of want to just drive around the English countryside and it's only the two of us. Yeah. Um, we don't have a, a road crew or anything with us. So it's just us, man. We'll get up, guitars on our back, go in and play. Yeah. So yeah. we can do it that way. So just like on the road of Kerouac, let's just, let's drive and let's go and explore the land. Like an yeah. adventure, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. So the tour is starting, and uh, I mean, just people have to go there because. Uh, if, and one thing which is most, which is as well important, people can find the ticket and the and the venue, or as well on the website. Uh, people can find the tickets and or VIP packages uh, <laughs> at kitsaintjohn.com, k e i t h s t j o h n dot com, and uh, or the local venue outlets. Okay, uh, both. Yeah, right, yeah. right. So that's perfect. and um, but or they can be directed to the local venue outlet from my site if they want to as well if they're more comfortable with that. So there's any I mean uh, anywhere that people want to buy the tickets they can do it even if they find yeah. out like at the last minute they they have the chance to go to the car the the I mean to the concert there is no excuses this time. So what can I say really uh, just have fun I mean if I'm you deserve to have fun, of course, but enjoy this beautiful land that is UK and Edinburgh, which I'm, I'm dying to see Edinburgh. Uh, it's and despite this period of the year, Edinburgh is uh, it's beautiful. It's fall in UK, it's stunning. It's uh, really like you know that kind of melancholy and history mix it up together. It's it's beautiful. So enjoy and feel the music. And as well, like in your shirt as well, there is Abbey Road calling. It's calling you. So, and what can I say? Thank you so much, Keith, for just as always do the talking we usually do. And I hope to see you live. If it, will, if it wouldn't be this time soon, of course, because we are waiting like three years by now, four years by now. So I don't, I don't want to be 50 or, th or 60. Well, if you want to visit Edinburgh, this is a great club to come to. Bannerman's is so, um, it's monumental. I mean, it's, it's a mighty venue. It's mm -hmm. nice. 
And I think as well, people, they can find uh, more info about you, of course, in your social um, media that I will put, of course, all in the um, description of the video. And so, Kit, um, before ending the interview, I just want to say thank you. And as always, it's, it's always a pleasure. And uh, enjoy the rest of the day. And uh, if there's something, a message that you want to leave to the fans and to the people, I leave you the last word and uh, see you soon all around Oh my God, Ada, I am so blessed that we did this together. I feel so good. Thank you so much for being here. Um, people who are watching this, I guarantee you an amazing time if you come out. Um, we will be doing giveaways. Uh, I have these uh, somewhere around. I have these little thumb drives that are very special that I'm giving away. And they have a lot of clips that only I have because I made them in the days when people didn't have the smartphones and all that stuff yet. So there's some really special Montrose um, radio show moments. And um, there's also all the Burning Rain videos and, uh, and Jack Frost in my videos, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I won't go on and on about it. I'll have those. I'll have, we'll, we'll have merch and shirts if you want. But we are there for you. Request something. Send me something on social media before your show and say, hey, man, can you guys play this? And chances are we will. And even at the gig, shout it out, man. We love you. We love this kind of music. And I can't wait to get to the UK. Thank you so much, Keith. So enjoy this, the rest of the day. Enjoy the tour. And let's, I mean, let's burn. I know, what was that? Let's burn the, I mean, rain is burning tour. Let's start it. Thank you so much. It's starting is beginning, Ada. And thank thanks. It's going to be amazing. Beginning sooner. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you much so fun. much. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of the day. Feel it right. It's got to get you down inside.